Um, Bob, just taking that distinction further, should we draw a, a, a line between Russian troops incurring upon those regions they have declared to be independent and the rest of Ukraine? Absolutely. Lord, Lord Dan, it's correct. I would be very, very careful, Tom, before we oversell what's happened. It's, it's pretty serious. There's no question about that. It, but de jure, it is an invasion. But de facto, it's not an invasion because Russia annexed these territories in 2014. And can I just say, when people say they're separate republics, they're not. The, the commanders there are, are, are Russian soldiers. A lot of the troops, a lot of the paramilitaries are Russian soldiers, minus the insignia. All the jobs were um, appointed by the Kremlin. Yeah, The Russians annexed this territory, and it is annexed by Russia in all but name since 2014. And so to say they're both independent is wrong. And to say that Russia is now invading Ukrainian territory whilst technically accurate, is not actually the case. Uh, and there is one potential option, uh, which is actually potentially quite good news for the West, is that, that um, Putin takes his gains in eastern Ukraine because he knows he can't use them to try to undermine the rest of the country and effectively annexes them. And if he does that, he's sort of giving up on potentially invading the rest of Ukraine. It may that may that that's one option may not be true or may not be what happens. But I just think one needs to be very wary before calling this an invasion. Is there not a distinction that can be made though between the area that Putin last night declared independent and the area that the separatists actually control? It's my understanding that the area that Putin recognised is actually quite a bit larger than that that uh, the Russian-backed forces, the Russian forces without insignia, whatever we want to call them, have actually controlled uh, since 2014. Uh, Tom, that's a good point. But if you go back to his essay this summer, The Historical Unity of the Russians and the Ukrainian People, actually quite an important essay to read, um, quite sort of conspiratorial and all that sort of very negative things, he actually lays out a lot of territory that he considers to be Russian or that he doesn't consider to be belonging to Ukraine. He says, if Ukraine wants independence, fair enough, but they go back to 1922 Soviet Union founding treaty and they go back to their borders then. And that means no Black Sea coast and no eastern Ukraine. So effectively what he wants to see, and Russian TV at the time laid out all the maps is all the all the counties from uh, Odessa, Kherson, Dnipro um, on the on the south of uh, Ukraine. He wants them, and he wants Donetsk. He wants Lugansk. He wants Kharkiv uh, in the east as well. So he effectively wants about half Ukraine's territory, leaving Ukraine as a sort of rump state. Um, with not even Kiev, but with, with Western Central inland Ukraine. That's ultimately the plan, because that's what he said in his essay. Well, it's fascinating. We're, we're going to have to sit. We're, I'm afraid we have to leave this conversation here, but no doubt we will be discussing this in further detail down the line, and we'll see if Putin does stay to those areas that he has declared independent. For now, Bob Seeley, uh, thank you very much for joining us.